Hey guys, Tamago here. Welcome back to another episode of Why the Hell is This Guy So Caught Up in Flash Games? Jesus Christ, can you play something else? So you read the title, When Flash Games Become Actual Games. I feel like there's something that needs to be discussed here. I can already sense the gamers in the comments like, What do you mean? Flash games are every much as real and valid as any game you would find on the- Listen, relax, relax. I'm getting to it. Just chill. So what makes a real game? Is a game only real if it's available on console? In that case, does that mean Life of Black Tiger is more real than anything you would find on Congregate? Because I would argue otherwise. If you guys don't know about Life of Black Tiger, or you did know and you've tried to forget, I'm sorry. Life of Black Tiger was a game released on the PS4 in 2017. Are you seeing this? This game came out in 2017. That's a year after Uncharted 4 came out. That's three years after Infamous Second Son. Hell, this game came out after Goat Simulator. Now that game wasn't perfect, but it was a hell of a lot better than this. Are you kidding me? At least that game was broken on purpose. The trailer for this game was uploaded to the official PlayStation YouTube channel. A trailer which uses stolen music, might I add. The entire release of this game was just a shambles. Whose idea was this? Why did Sony put this on the PlayStation 4? The game made by the same people who brought us Life of Deer and Life of Wolf 2014 free. Where was the quality control? So no, simply being on console doesn't qualify something as being a real game or an actual game. But when we think of Flash games, we typically only remember them as these short and sweet browser experiences that you'd play for a few minutes, maybe an hour or two if it was really good, but then you'd move on to something else. We don't typically think of Flash games as full-blown gaming experiences. I mean, ask someone what their favorite game of all time is, and it's unlikely that a Flash game will even come into consideration. I feel like Flash games are thought of as being in a whole other league of their own, and a lesser one at that. But there are a few games that managed to blur the line. Games that transcended their miniclip and Newgrounds roots, and ended up as console releases. And I'm gonna talk about them in this video. Now some of these games won't be a surprise at all. Some of them will have you thinking, wait that was a Flash game? And others will have you thinking, Wait, that game came out on console? Why? The first game I want to talk about is an indie legend. You think indie game, you think Super Meat Boy. Now many of us notice as the platformer that was really hard both to play and to stop playing. And for most people, this is a game they downloaded on the Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, and most recently it came to the Nintendo Switch. But you might be surprised to hear that Super Meat Boy is actually the successor to a Flash game released on Newgrounds in 2008 called Meat Boy. This game was designed by Edmund McMillan and Jonathan McKenty in just three weeks, and features Meat Boy traversing levels much like the ones we see in the full release game. The Flash game was very popular and caught the eye of Microsoft and Nintendo who wanted to work with Macmillan to bring a game in his style to their platforms. So he partnered with another programming buddy of his, Tommy Refiniz, to form Team Meat and together they got working on Super Meat Boy. The full release version of the game stays very true to the Flash version, but one major difference is the change from a portrait aspect ratio to a landscape one. I was quite surprised that the Flash game had this aspect ratio to begin with, especially since it would have been unconventional even for the time. That said, after playing through some of the levels, it's clear that verticality was a huge emphasis in the Flash version of the game, and so having this vertical design makes perfect sense. If we compare it to the console release of the game, we still find that vertical platforming all over the place, but there tends to be much more horizontal play too. Something that's pretty funny is that on the title screen of the Flash game, Meat Boy can be seen running off to the right, but if we expand the screen past where we're supposed to see as players, you can find Meat Boy just infinitely running into a tree. Another thing that's pretty cool is the dude who produced the music for Super Meat Boy Danny Baranowski also made the songs that featured in the original Flash release, and some of the songs appear in both versions, albeit with some differences. There are also plans to release a sequel called Super Meat Boy Forever later this year. 
but frankly, I don't trust anything that says it's set to come out in 2020 anymore. Another game with very similar origins is Alien Hominid. This is a run and gun shooter developed by the founder of Newgrounds, Tom Fulp, as well as Dan Paladin. You play as a yellow alien who crashes down to earth, shoots an innocent civilian, I mean, you don't have to do it, but I did, and then has to fend off waves of secret agents. This game is really challenging since the hominid is a one-hit kill and these agents are relentless. I thought after beating the first boss I'd get a bit of a break, but no! The game was released in 2002 and was such a hit that one of Paladin's co-workers, John Byers, offered to help them produce a console version of the game which had expanded gameplay elements, new game modes, and introduced co-op multiplayer. In 2004, the game would be released on the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox, making it one of the earliest Flash games to cross over to consoles. The team behind Alien Hominid went on to form The Behemoth, the studio responsible for other hit titles such as Castle Crashes and Battle Block Theater, and they're currently working on a sequel to Alien Hominid called Alien Hominid Invasion, set to release later this year. But you're not gonna make me say it again, are you? Now, one game I do remember from my miniclip days is Trials. In this game, you control a rider on a motorcycle and navigate them through an obstacle course while the physics of the game do you no favors. Unlike the other games mentioned, Trials actually began as a Java-based browser game and didn't use Flash until its sequel, Trials 2. The development company Red Links was founded in 2000 by Antti Oveswo and his brother and in 2009, the studio brought Trials to console for the first time, with the Xbox 360 release of Trials HD. Red Links was eventually acquired by Ubisoft, and since then, three more installments to the series have been released, consisting of Trials Evolution, Trials Fusion, and Trials Rising, which came out early last year on all major platforms. The series has improved massively in production value over the years, but unfortunately, the modern practice practices of in-game purchases and loot boxes would see the game garner criticism from more long-term fans of the franchise. Still, it can't be denied, it's pretty impressive that this little browser game managed to go so far and is still being updated over two decades later. Now a game that will probably come as no surprise is Fancy Pants. This has got to be one of the most recognizable characters in Flash game history. How do you make a stick man recognizable? Well, you give him a cool hairdo, some baggy orange trousers, or... <clears throat> Pants, along with an unrelentingly chill demeanor, and you got yourself a Flash game hero. Fancy Pants Adventure is a side-scrolling platformer created by Brad Bourne and first released to the world in 2006. It was a pretty short game, but its smooth mechanics and charming design would see it garner a lot of popularity, and so Brad went on to create a massively successful sequel in 2008, Fancy Pants Adventure World 2. In 2011, EA published a console version of the game that was released on the Xbox Live Arcade and the PlayStation Network. This version featured both of the original worlds, as well as a set of new levels and a multiplayer mode. In 2012, the third Flash game installment, Fancy Pants Adventure World 3 was released, and included many of the features added in the console version. And finally, in 2017, Super Fancy Pants Adventure was released on Steam, and is a culmination of all the games that came before it, as well as including new levels, new gameplay features, and a new weapon in the form of an ink pen. Surprisingly, Brad Bourne is still working on the Flash version of the series, and is in the process of developing Fancy Pants Adventure World 4. This is apparently going to be a browser version of the Steam release of the game, with the first part being made playable on his website as of March this year. Now if you know about Flash games, you'd know Fancy Pants wasn't the only dude running loop-de-loops. Line Rider was a hugely popular Flash game released in 2006 by Slovenian student Bostjan Kadez. In this game, you draw a course for this dude called Bosch to ride on his sled. 
the game has simulated physics and you have to try and make a course that won't end up killing Bosch in the process, or at least one that won't seriously injure him. This game was such a viral hit that McDonald's even used it for a 2008 ad campaign, and in that same year, a version of the game was released for the Nintendo DS called Line Rider Freestyle, or Line Rider 2 Unbound, depending on where you're buying it from. The Nintendo DS seemed like the perfect platform for this game, given the emphasis on the stylus, as well as apps on the handheld that already encouraged drawing like PictoChat. Surprisingly though, the game was also released on the Wii, with players using the Wiimote to draw the stages, which I can only imagine as being incredibly frustrating. The console version of the game adds background scenery, a multiplayer puzzle mode, and a story mode complete with voice acting and cutscenes. It seems the web version of the game is still king though, with incredibly impressive courses still being created to this day. It's a masterpiece, baby. Next, I want to talk about Flow. This was a Flash game developed in 2006 by Genova Chen and Nicholas Clark in order to accompany Chen's master's thesis on the psychological concept of flow. In the game, you play as an aquatic microorganism and you evolve by consuming other microorganisms. It's really relaxing with great sound design and gameplay that's pretty laid back but surprisingly engaging. Chen went on to form his development studio, That Game Company, alongside Kelly Santiago, and in 2007, an updated version of the game was released on the PlayStation Store, making it one of the earliest downloadable titles for Sony's brand new console at the time, the PS3. The console version of the game featured more playable microorganisms, enhanced visuals, and of course, a multiplayer mode. That game company would also go on to create the 2012 indie smash hit Journey, as well as make a sequel to Flow called Flower. Get it? Because it's more Flow? Flower? I'm sorry, I just wanted to make that joke. N! Like the game, N. N is a platformer developed in Flash by Metanet Software and released in 2004. In this one, you play as a ninja and have to navigate your way through the levels while avoiding obstacles, collecting gold, and opening the exit door to progress through the game. N was really popular for its challenging gameplay and its vast array of levels, with the original version containing over 500 different maps. The sequel to N, N Plus, was released in 2008 for the Xbox 360, PSP, and Nintendo DS. The gameplay was much the same, but featured an updated visual style and even more levels. And in 2015, Metanet released the third installment of the game, N Plus Plus, on the PlayStation 4, with the game later coming to the Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. N Plus Plus in its current state features over 4,000 levels, a hardcore mode in case you want to suffer even more, as well as cooperative and competitive multiplayer. But it stays true to the simple but addictive flash game formula that made it so popular in the first place. I think all this goes to show the huge impact that Flash had on the gaming industry. It honed an entire generation of gamers and game developers, and essentially pioneered the indie game movement. Even with Flash support going away at the end of this year, its influence is sure to last for many years to come. So did any of these games surprise you? Are there any other Flash games you think I really should talk about? Leave them as a comment below and I might just check them out for a future video. Speaking of which, if you're new here and you want to make sure you don't miss out on that, then be sure to subscribe to the channel with your notifications turned on. But until then, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.